welcome back to Vidorama, where we remember the VHS releases of the past in graphic detail. My name's Avril Jones and I'm an artist, and each month on this channel I paint a tribute to a movie that we rented on video back in the day. Today I'm going to be painting a tribute to Funny Man, released in 1994, and I'd like to dedicate it to my dear friend David Lynch. No, not that one. Dave and I attended art college back in the mid to late 90s, early 2000s. Not the easiest place to be when you want to learn how to animate or illustrate comics and the lecturers who have no interest in such things insist that you draw a chair in the style of Matisse using only your left hand and a twig dipped in ink. But anyway, we went against the grain and refused to conform. Dave was like-minded and we spent hours chatting about comics, cult TV and horror movies. One evening I watched Funny Man and I loved it. I thought it was a brilliantly witty and original film and uh, the following morning I arrived at college excited to tell Dave about it, only to find that he had also watched it and loved it as much as me. We then seemed to spend the entire day discussing the movie and quoting various lines from it. A trend that continued throughout our days in higher education. So Funny Man has a special place in my heart. It takes me back to a time which was somewhat frustrating. But thanks to Dave they were good times. So Dave, if you're still watching my videos, this is for you. Um, during the last video many of you commented that you'd like to see me actually prepare the drawing before painting. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do but I'll have a go. So as you can see I've already started. So without further delay, because this intro is a little bit too long in my opinion, let's paint a tribute to Funny Man. You see I use my computer for photo references and so I usually draw on my lap. I work with pen and so I use Tipex correction fluid. I often resize my drawings on the photocopier and then cut them out and stick them on the drawing. It allows my drawings to be a little less constrained but the process can be somewhat fiddly at times. I've always been concerned that this process would make the videos longer and somewhat tedious but if you would like to see the entire process let me know in the comments. Tipex pens are great and since I started using them around 25 plus years ago I've never looked back. I use regular cheap Bic Biros when I sketch, um, black ink because it's better for photocopying, but I use whatever marker pen that I have to hand when I need to blacken up a large part of the drawing. I then use higher quality pens when I'm painting because at that stage I'm effectively writing on plastic and so it needs to be a permanent ink. It's nothing for me to spend an hour or so on a drawing and then just start over. Likeness has to be just right. Sometimes I can be reasonably happy with the portion of the drawing and so I glue a piece of paper over the portion that doesn't work and start over. Reference is important and I will consult the numerous photos that I've gathered on my computer. If I need a certain pose I will either have a look to see what Google image has to offer or photograph myself adopting that pose. I could see the image in my head, um, the layout of the image, but sometimes I will place the drawing on the main image with blue tack and change the angle, moving around, just try in different positions until I'm happy with how it looks. The sketches that I made while watching the film are mostly for reference. There have been times where the drawing I have made is too big to fit and so this is where the photocopier comes in. I then reduce the drawing so it fits, cut it out and glue it on. I told you it was fiddly. Me being me, I opted to draw the funny man who has an incredibly detailed face and elaborate costumes complete with bells four times. And that's not enough, no, I also want to add over 30 playing cards to the image as well. I wanted to have the funny man climbing out of various playing cards. Uh, you will note that I have the funny man holding a club in the Ace of Clubs, the funny man in drag for the Ace of Hearts, and I also use both Joker cards. I will also have the year the film came out referenced by using a 9 and a 4. I'm quite mad you know. Right, the drawing complete, I then photocopy the entire drawing onto thin card for painting. Thin card 
takes the paint better than paper, usually. All detail is reapplied and added to with pens. And this is where we would normally start the video. There we go, that's all set, so now let's paint it. The colours I'm using today are Titanium White, Mars Black, Rose Madder and Blue Lake. For those of you that haven't watched any of my videos before, I use acrylic paint and I'm partial to using my finger to apply large amounts of paint to the card. This is purely to avoid paint strokes as they can be immensely frustrating when I scan the finished painting. But this red paint is far too thin and not very good and so I'm forced to apply copious amounts of it with a brush. Enjoy your moment in the limelight Rose Madder as this will be the last project you will ever work on. My own love for this film aside, it's also a matter of British pride that I finally add a British horror film to this channel. For those of you that haven't seen the film, The Plot, an unpleasant music producer called Max Taylor wins Callum Chance's ancestral home in England in a poker game. Max takes his wife and two children to the house, but after spinning the wheel of chance in the games room, he awakens the funny man, uh, Mr. Punch, court jests the creature that murders Max's family one at a time. Shortly after, Max's brother Johnny arrives at the mansion, along with a few hitchhikers, a psychic commando, a hard man, a crack puppeteer, and Thelma Fudd. And sure enough, the funny man extends the same welcome to them. Funny man is wonderfully different. It's like a slasher film crossed with a comedy skit show. If you haven't seen it yet, you are missing out. It's imaginative, it has hilarious kills and it features a compelling killer who breaks the fourth wall and winks at us, the audience. Love it. Funny Man was written and directed by Simon Sprackling, who, having long had an interest in film, particularly the work of George Romero, had made his own Super 8 films in 1982 before later attending film school in Edinburgh. Along with friend Nigel O'Dell, he co-produced a National Film and TV School student film, which went on to win Best Student Film at the Houston World Film Festival in 1991. Having watched Witchcraft 3, Sprackling believed that he could make a better horror film and so he set out to make it happen. He met visual effects designer Neil Gorton, who had previously worked on Lair of the White Worm, Hellraiser 2 and Nightbreed, and he would later go on to produce the animatronics and prosthetics for Doctor Who. Gorton had a script for a horror movie, but Sprackling felt the story was too complicated and so he wrote a simpler one himself. With friend actor Tim James in mind for the protagonist, he combined a love for poker and the image of Mr. Punch and devised a demonic jester character summoned up from a poker game. They started filming a short film called Hand of Fate in the summer of 1992. Different in style, Hand of Fate was a straight up horror with Tim James wearing the prosthetics designed by Neil Gorton. James played this character straight, uh, evil and menacing, but in between takes he would muck about in full costume and Sprackling quickly realised that what was happening off camera was a lot more interesting than what was happening in front of it, and so the decision was made to let James run with this character, ad-libbing and improvising dialogue. A week later the 20 minute short was completed, uh, spurred on by the positive response that he had received. The decision was made to expand it into a full-length feature film, filming an additional hour's worth of footage and adding it to what they already had. One of the people that loved the short was musician Stefan Parsons, who had previously composed the music for Howling 2. He agreed to put up some of the money for the film and also provide the music. But a problem soon arose. Christopher Burgess, who played Max Taylor in the short, had been offered another better paid part and so was no longer available. This meant that all the footage that they already had was now unusable and so they found themselves having to reshoot all those scenes again from scratch with what was already a limited budget. 
Because of the condition they had left the previous location, they weren't allowed back there, so they used Wyfold Court in South Oxfordshire as Chance's Mansion. The Grade 2 listed building, which was designed by George Summers Lee Clark, was built in 1874, and it was the former country home of cotton tycoon and conservative politician Edward Herman before it was sold to the state in 1932 and converted into the Borough Court Institution for Mental Defectives. An asylum that once featured in the controversial 1981 documentary Silent Minority which highlighted the conditions of mental patients at that time. Closed in 1993, a few months before production started on Funny Man, the building would once again feature in The Saint in 1997 before being converted into apartments in 2000. Two other locations were used for filming, Southend Beach for the Punch and Judy sequence and Shepperton Studios for the village of Sod's Law. They used the set left over from the 1992 American television series Covington Cross. The set had been left in situ as they waited to see if the show would be picked up for a second series. It wasn't. No, no, really. In fact, of the 13 episodes produced, ABC pulled Covington Cross off the air seven episodes in. Then the following year, the set was used in Red Dwarf. Yes, it was. It was used in the fourth episode of Series 6, Emahawk Polymorph 2. It was the Kinotowawi Gelf Village. But then the Funny Man moved in and it was modified by the film's art director prop buyer, Adam Deschamps, who painted the house in bright colours and added fairy lights, a toadstool and various garden gnomes. The village was next to the set used on Kenneth Branagh's Frankenstein adaptation, which almost caught fire during the production of Funny Man. Thankfully, they noticed the stray pyrotechnic projectile just in time before it could do some serious damage. Sprackling himself also caught fire on the set when he accidentally backed into a flaming torch. Thankfully, they were able to put him out in the village pond. As for the movie's cast, Sprackling wanted an established name to elevate the film, so he approached Christopher Lee to star as Callum Chance. He sent him the script, and much to his delight, Lee asked to meet at the Carlton Hotel in Knightsbridge. After a two-hour chat with Lee, who, despite raising concerns about the swearing, said that he had been impressed by the script's originality, and so agreed to be in the film. Of course, Christopher Lee needs no introduction on this channel, but it's funny, during the film's release, Lee said that this was his first horror film in over 20 years. Not actually true. Although he wasn't making horror movies as frequently as he had been in previous decades, there were a few. He was in Panga, uh, also known as Curse 3, Blood Sacrifice. He was, of course, in Gremlins 2, The New Batch in 1990. I'll just explain what I'm doing here. In the film, the Wheel of Chance was old and worn, and so I'm using a sponge to dab white paint on. I define the edges, make it look like worn paper. But going back to Christopher Lee's comment, in the 80s he was in Howling 2 in 1985, The House of Long Shadows in 1983, the TV movie Evil Stalks This House was in 1981, he was in The End of the World in 1977, there was Meat Cleaver Massacre, Dracula and Son, and To the Devil a Daughter in 76. The Wicker Man and the Satanic Rites of Dracula were released in 73, so I'm not sure why he made this claim. Did he mean British horror film? Although he was only there for two days shooting, his presence is felt throughout the film. I've seen him receive top billing on other movies and he's barely on screen. In this film, it's much more than just a cameo. Callum Chance is a compelling character that pops up throughout the film. When it came to the finished film, however, Lee felt it was a little too bloody for his liking and he took particular umbrage with the death of the psychic commander. Misunderstanding the scene, he found it to be offensive and so when it came to endorsing the film at Cannes, he agreed to attend but made it clear that he would give his honest opinion on the film if asked. As for the rest of the Funny Man cast, it was made up of several regular faces on British TV. There was Benny Young, who was cast as Max Taylor, and there was Matthew Devitt, who seems to have been in everything. I fondly remember him as Dog in Red Dwarf. There was Ingrid Lacey, who played Max's wife. Uh, she played Helen Cooper in Drop the Dead Donkey. I actually saw her performing alongside John Sim in Elling at uh, the Bush Theatre in London, I think it was, back in 2007. Chris Walker as the hard man who has appeared in countless TV dramas. And playing the psychic commando was singer Pauline Black, 
founding member of the band The Selector that performed during the 1970s. And of course there was Rona Cameron giving us the first unofficial live action stream version of Velma from Scooby-Doo. A friend of Sprackling, they had long joked that Cameron looked like Velma. At the time of shooting Funny Man, she had won the annual stand-up comedy competition So You Think You're Funny the previous year. Sprackling had been a singer with the punk band No Fixed Hairstyle and he offered the band's drummer George Morton the part of Crap Puppeteer. Shortly after, Sprackling, who used to play football, was discussing the film with another player at the bar. An aspiring actor, the man asked if he had a part in the film for an upper-class homosexual. Sprackling told him that the part had already been cast. And so Mr Hugh Grant went on to star in Four Weddings and a Funeral instead. But anyway, let's be honest here. The star of the film is the funny man himself played by fellow Welshman Tim James, who is so funny and really does make the film. Born outside Newport, Wales, Tim James attended school at Chepstow, and upon leaving school, he signed up to join the Marines, but decided to be an actor instead. He was awarded a discretionary grant for acting and attended the Welsh College of Music and Drama in Cardiff. During his time at the Welsh College of Music and Drama, he met and befriended scriptwriter Rob Sprackling, Simon's brother. And after living in London for a few years, James was offered the chance to join a dive salvage operation in the West Indies, hunting for Spanish treasure. After doing that for a while, he then took people diving at various places around the West Indies, before joining the crew of a sailing yacht that sailed back across the Atlantic. But after encountering some fairly hefty storms, he was asked to stay on board and serve as first mate on several yacht races, including the Fastnet. And when he returned to the UK, he hooked up with his old college friends and got back into film. And that path led to the Funny Man Project, which by all accounts was a happy experience, essentially filming a movie during a party. The cast and crew were friends, they had fun, and I feel that this comes across in the film. This doesn't mean that they weren't taking it seriously though. Everyone was committed to the project and they worked hard, adapting to any challenges that arose. But once the film was finished, they embarked on the next challenge, promoting it. As I mentioned before, Christopher Lee promoted the film at the Cannes Film Festival in May 1994, along with Tim James in full Funny Man garb. James even attended the premiere of True Lies as the Funny Man, with page three glamour model Rachel Garley on his arm as a PR stunt. This movie premiered at the Edinburgh Film Festival in August, and it was released in October. As an independent movie, it faced the usual challenges to get noticed. Sprackling was appalled to learn that in order to have Barry Norman review the film, they would have to pay £150 to hire a cinema for him to watch it on his own. For those of you under a certain age and not from the UK, Barry Norman presented the BBC's cinema review programme, film, whatever the year was. He was never really the sort of guy that you'd want to review your independent horror movie anyway, but uh, Jonathan Ross, on the other hand, said that it was vicious, violent and way over the top, and that he loved every minute of it. But my favourite quote, which I remember reading on the rental video at the time, was the one from ID magazine, which called it Freddy Krueger meets Roy Chubby Brown. As for the film itself, it really needs to be acknowledged for its originality, which sets it apart from all the other slasher movies made during the 1990s. They had hoped that the film would spawn a franchise, and Sprackling wrote a treatment for a follow-up film called Funny Man Goes to Hollywood, but sadly the first film didn't make enough money and that was the end of that. After that, Simon Sprackling went on to write, produce and direct three comedy shorts called Men in the Streets, also starring Tim James, that were released in 2002. He then went on to produce documentaries for DVDs. There was Directing the Beast for the 2003 release of The Beast Must Die, and he then directed Inseminoid Girl for the Inseminoid release in 2004, along with Last of the Gentleman Producers for the Wild Geese DVD, and Touching the Devil. The Making of Blood on Satan's Claw and Linda Hayden, An Angel for Satan, which was also a Blood of Satan's Claw DVD. In 2005, he was the producer on Wish Baby and he was the producer and co-writer of The Reeds. He was a producer on Solo in 2011 and then he went on to direct Breakfast with Johnny Wilkinson in 2013. 
As for Tim James, he went on to play the Scunny Bunny in Rob Sprackling's Mike Bassett's Manager TV series in 2005, and he served as the first assistant director on the Reeds in 2010. But these days, with all his sailing experience, he now serves as helmsman on the RNLI Teddington Lifeboat Station in West London on the River Thames. One of the first stations, in fact, to watch over a river rather than an estuarial water or the sea. Once again, for those of you outside the UK, the RNLI stands for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, which provides an invaluable essential life-saving service at sea and around the coast of the United Kingdom and has done so since 1824. Teddington Lifeboat Station became fully operational in 2002 and it is entirely run by volunteers and this year Tim James was awarded the RNLI Long Service Award for 20 years service. Funny Man has a dear and special place in my heart and it's been a real pleasure celebrating it with you today. I fell in love with this movie during a time in which I felt as though I'd taken on the system. Funny Man represents an exciting moment in time when a group of friends did the same thing. They got together and embarked on an adventure. They made an original, entertaining horror movie. Not something we saw all that often in Britain back then. They just don't make them like that anymore. Still, turned out nice again. Sorted. Thank you for joining me today and keeping me company. As ever, I hope that was of interest to you and I hope you approve of the final painting. If so, let me know. I'd love to know what you think of my painting. <laughs> Fuck me, it's dark in here. Somebody fetch me another 999,000 candles before I break my bloody neck. Oh, that's better. Right, what have we got going on here then? Oh, ho, ho. that's very eye-catching, that is. Beautiful likeness he's got going on there. Oh, you, come from over there to over here and have a look at this. Bloody hell, how many candles have you got? Well, what the fuck's all this about then? What you've got here, see, is one artist's interpretation, a tribute, if you will, of another piece of art, but in a different media. Lovingly captured in acrylic and pen, it depicts man's struggle through the ages with his inner demons, the duel between good and bad. What the fuck are you on about? You been on that psychedelic wig again? Well, as I've always said, I know fuck all about art, but I know what I like. And I like it. I like it a lot. Absolutely smashing. Right, I'm off for a fag me. And put them bloody candles out. Ta-da! The funny man himself approves of the painting, which is just brilliant. And the perfect way to end this project, which has been a genuine labour of love. Perfect. Delighted. I've made no secrets of it. I adore this film. So, brilliant. If you agree with the funny man about the painting, let me know in the comments and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd like to thank Tim James and Simon Sprackling for all their time and kindness and I'd also like to thank these kind folks for supporting the project on Patreon. If you'd like to become a Vidorama Video Club member you'll find all the relevant links in the description. I'm just sorry it took so long to get this one out but it had to be just right and uh, I have been a little distracted of late. Haven't I? Well, there we go, dear viewer. That's another tribute to a movie from the past. And until the next one, good night out there. Whatever you.